diverse backgrounds and diverse skill sets so that anything anyone needs, they can get in Hamtramck. That's a great vision, and you nailed it first time, all right? So I look forward to that same shared vision that you have. Hamtramck should provide everything for everyone, and I look forward to that. So that said, we're always looking for more new members. We meet once a month, third Wednesday of the month at 6 o'clock at City Hall. And it is our goal to develop and trend. So Hassan, thank you for the brief few moments to speak. I look forward to meeting many of you throughout this meeting. And again, thank you for coming and taking time out of your busy lives. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. Um, and again, as been said, I encourage everybody in this room, if you're interested, please reach out and see um, as there are opportunities to become board members for the DDA. They do a lot of great work underneath Vince's leadership and uh, would love to have you guys involved. Um, next up, I'm going to bring up Myra Lee and Joe Mizek uh, from, Mizek from uh, uh, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence's office. Say a few words. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you so much for the Yemeni Chamber for inviting our office to attend. Um, thank you so much for the DBA and the City of Hamtramck for this wonderful event. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Myra Lee. I am the Business Outreach Specialist for Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence. And this is my colleague, Joe Mischak, who is um, going to focus on um, Hamtramck as far as constituent services. Um, a lot has been said already. Uh, it's an honor to serve the Congresswoman. Um, as far as small business, she really does believe that small business is the pulse of economic development and prosperity. And in this new Congress, she's going to make sure that she hears from you all and understands what she needs to be doing on the Hill to fight and advocate for the programs that help and grow your business. So please, um, I won't take too much time, but just want to make sure that you all do take the time um, to engage with me and Joe um, as advisors of the congressman. We want to make sure that small businesses are heard. We need to understand in the current state and landscape of economic development in the city, um, we need to understand what's working and what's not. So keeping it simple, uh, Joe, is there anything else you want to share? Uh, covered. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you all for just making sure to stay in touch with Congressman Brenda Lawrence. Um, ben and Congresswoman has always appreciated and thank you to the Yemeni Chamber and let us know if there's anything else that you need from us today. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, we're gonna go right into our program now. Um, if you look at your agendas, if you guys don't have one, there's some agendas on the back table over there. Uh, we're gonna have a presentation, uh, a quick, short presentation from our income tax department here in the city. Going over, since it is income tax season, uh, going over some forms um, and really showing that they're a resource and they're allies in terms of trying to make sure things are done properly um, in terms of helping our businesses here in the city succeed. So uh, with no further ado, we're gonna have uh, Ms. Bessie Johnson and Mr. Dave Webster uh, talk for a, a, a brief moment about uh, income taxes. Thank you everybody. My name is David Webster, and this is Johnson from the income tax department. Um, and what we wanted to meet with you briefly today and talk about city income taxes. I know it's a topic that uh, everybody, <laughs> it's the elephant in the room sometimes, but it, it is part of, uh, it's a critical part of, of city revenue. And uh, I want to let you know that uh, the city has had an income tax since 1964. Uh, and if you do business within the city of Hamtramck, uh, then generally you're required to file tax returns and pay taxes in order to be in compliance. Uh, that being said, Mrs. Johnson, I want you to know that the department is here, as Hassan said, to help you and assist you in any way that we can in order to help you be compliant. Uh, we want you to view us as a resource or as a help desk, if you will. Uh, our objective is to help you navigate the compliance process as smoothly as possible, and we want you to know that we're always available to help with income tax related questions and procedures. Uh, we provide a sample of income tax forms on that back table back there. Uh, there's corporate forms, partnership forms, uh, business registration forms, withholding forms, all sorts of forms. Um, please feel free to take some once you've had a chance to review them. Uh, please feel free to contact us with any questions. We've also uh, provided some uh, business cards so that you can contact us. Um, so thank you to the sign and uh, all involved for allowing us the opportunity to speak briefly about income taxes. Uh, I'm going 
We want to thank you for choosing to do business in your train. Thanks very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, make sure you guys stop. We have some vendors in the back as well. Um, we have uh, a lot of information back there that we can that we can utilize. So on your way out, and you guys are getting some food, make sure you stop back there and check what we have out there for you guys. There's a lot of good resources for you. Um, next up, I'm going to bring up Elliot uh, Zelenak, who is our Project Rising Tide fellow, to talk very briefly about Project Rising Tide here in the city and how you can get involved. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. And thank you, everyone, for showing up. It's wonderful to see everyone out here. Uh, so my name is Elliot Zelenak. I'm with the City Council in Lincoln Park, and I'm more than happy and so excited to be working at Hamtramck for the next year until January of 2020. Um, so Project Rising Tide, I'll be quick and brief because they have a long agenda today. It looks like a short amount of time. I would like to say that Project Rising Tide is an initiative through the state of Michigan, the MEDC, Michigan Economic Development Corporation, to help support thrive, or to help make communities thriving um, through successful uh, implementation of projects and community building and stakeholder, uh, through stakeholder meetings. Um, so what I will be doing is utilizing state resources and Hamtramck's aspects that are already in place towards economic revitalization and as well as community development. So I will be here again until January 2020, working with you guys alongside all of you. Hopefully, um, in the back, we have a sign-in sheet if you guys can get some more information about you know, who you are, what you work with, your email address, and your phone number, so we can contact you guys and get a hold of you. We can work towards uh, the economic revitalization that Hamtramck is going towards in the future. Um, I'll say that I'm excited, and I'll be here. Uh, you know, I'll be at City Hall every single or Monday through Friday at 8 to 4 p.m., so come by and see me anytime you want. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elliot. Elliot's definitely working very hard um, as part of the team, and we're doing as much as we can here. So we'd love to see you guys get in, in, uh, engaged, involved, um, and uh, we'll definitely look forward to working with everybody here. Um, in the back, on the vending tables, we have Leading Green Michigan. Uh, their chief executive officer is in town. Uh, Baldi, if you want to wave to everybody, if you want to stop by and see what resources he has to offer you. We have KMK Multi-Service Center um, in the back as well. Um, uh, right next to him, and then we also have Wake County Healthy Communities, who also has some information. If you want, Virginia is waving back there as well. If you want to see her on the way out, um, on the right side we have uh, resources from the City of Hamtramck, Project Rising Tide, as well as the Income uh, Tax Department that you guys can stop by, check out some forms, and we'll be more than happy to help you with. And then we have a table from the Yemeni American Chamber of Commerce. Um, when, and um, there's a lot of great resources back there, so please make sure that you utilize that. Now, next up, with no further ado, we're going to go into our, the meat of our program. Um, we have Assistant County Executive Khalil Rahal here with us. If you can make your way up to the podium. Um, Khalil, works, <laughs> Khalil works night and day uh, to, to encourage business growth, economic growth here in our county. And he has been one of the key roles, he has held one of the key roles that has seen Wake County turn itself around um, and, and, and turn into the monster that it is today. So, with no further ado, let's give him a round of applause. Throwing this great event. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the amount of support in this room that we're seeing. Uh, you know, it's very, very clear that Hamtramck is a very tight knit community. And on behalf of the county executive, the one thing I want everybody to understand is what is good for Hamtramck is good for Wayne County. What is good for Hamtramck in Wayne County is good for Southeast Michigan. And it's really, really a good driver for the rest of the state. And so we are going to do the best that we can to provide whatever county resources to match up with whatever city resources talk to whatever state resources and Brenda Lawrence folks, because the only way that this works, the one way we've been able to get Wayne County back humming again is by making sure all levels of government are working with the business community together. And I can't state that enough, because anybody that's doing it separately or on their own is a way of slowing down whatever progress that we've made. And so, uh, really, give yourselves a round of applause, because I think this is fantastic. <laughs> Uh, if it's okay with everybody, I think what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about Wayne County, uh, a little bit about where we're going, uh, a little bit about where we came from, what you can expect, and a little bit about the small business resources that we have at the county level that maybe we can provide and help with your all businesses grow and expand to the best of our ability, okay? Yep. So if you don't know Wayne County very well, you should know it is the largest county in the state of Michigan. It is the 19th largest county in the country. We have 1.75 million people in Wayne County. 
Uh, and many people ask, how many people are in the city of Detroit? There's about 670,000 people in the city of Detroit. If you took the city of Detroit out of Wayne County, you'd still have one of the largest counties in the state of Michigan. That's how many people we have in Wayne County, okay? And we're the most diverse county in the state. We have a diversity index of 59%. That means you are 59% likely to run into somebody of a different ethnicity than you are in Wayne County versus a lot of other places. Uh, and we believe diversity is our strength. Uh, we believe it is the reason why we've had so much success in the past. Uh, now, Wayne County is on a comeback, the likes of which this country has never seen. Many of you remember maybe four years ago, we were on the verge of bankruptcy. A lot of the numbers that existed at Wayne County rivaled the city of Detroit. We had an accumulative deficit of $82 million. We had a structural deficit annually of $52 million. We had unfunded mandated liability costs in the billions. Our pensions were funded at 44%. We were in junk bond status. On top of all of that, we had a half-filled Lake County jail that was bleeding us money, about a million two every month. Now we have to fix these things. We have to fix our financial situation because if we don't, we can't provide you all services, right? So you all get roads, bridges, sheriff services, all the services, health and wellness. The county helps provide societal services that make sure your businesses thrive. And unless we fix our financial situation, unless we fix the jail, it's gonna make it very, very hard for activity to keep carrying on in the 43 municipalities. Most people thought we were gonna file the bankruptcy. Most people thought we were gonna get an emergency manager. But four years later, here we sit. Both deficits have been eliminated. We've cut a billion dollars from unfunded mandated liability costs. Our pensions are gonna be funded up to 60%. Today we sit with a surplus of $110 million. And for the first time in decades, we are investment grade. Now that's a comeback that you're not gonna find anywhere. And we really did a great solution with the jail. Uh, we found a very, very great partner to work with. We found a great solution there. I think everybody can agree that out of the circumstances that we had, we come out on top of that situation as well, right? Where do we go from here? We really think it's time to rebuild Wayne County to be the best place to work, live, and play. When we talk about Wayne County, we talk about 43 distinct individual communities that all provide their local flavors, that all provide their local feel, that all provide their own communities and neighborhoods. And so what I think Wayne County wants to do is be a supporter of what's happening on the local level, okay? Now, I get a lot of jobs at the county. I'm assistant county executive. I deal with the federal and state legislative things. I deal with uh, HUD, uh, the HUD programs. I deal with housing. I'm also the economic development director at the county, okay? And what I can tell you is the world and how we develop our economy is changing rapidly. We used to be a place, and this country used to be a place, where we had to make the environment really good for the Fords, the GMs, the Chryslers, the Amazons, right? Bring those companies in and the jobs would follow. You would find talent that would follow, you would find people who would work for those companies for 30 years. And they would be with those companies forever, and so they would follow those companies. It's not like that today. You know, to the, today's millennial you know, does not do that. Today's millennial goes to a place where they want to go, and they find a job that coincides with it. And so we really think it's our job to help find that place, to help create that place, to help make hand traffic a place where people want to be, and have the talent come, and then have the businesses follow. And that's what we're going to be doing the next four years. And taking that approach, our focus is not going away from the Fords and the crises with GMs, but it's going to be heavily reliant on the small businesses, the vendors in this room, uh, the, the people that are, as Kathy said, the backbone of our economy. Many people don't know this, but next year in Wayne County, 70%, over 70% of all the new jobs and new investment that will come to Wayne County will come from existing Wayne County businesses. So that's what it makes sense for us to hone. That's what makes sense for us to look at and focus and provide resources to those folks. Because the big folks, 
They know where those resources are. They know how to get to them. They know who to talk to. They know how to talk to them. They know when to talk to them. But oftentimes, small businesses, they're so busy, they're just sometimes trying to get by. And so one thing we did in Wayne County is we created the Wayne County Business Resource Network. Okay, you can find this online at www.waynecounty.com. If you click on the, the Economic Development tab, you will find a tab that says Wayne County Business Resource Network. Let me tell you what we did. We teamed up with an organization called the Small Business Development Center that provides free resources to small businesses in a number of different areas. And then we found another 40 different organizations to partner with. And a couple of those organizations are in the back. Uh, you know, Lean and Green, Pace Financing with Bali there. Many people don't know, if you have infrastructure improvements, right, in your facilities, and you want to redo your windows because your electricity is too high, but you don't want to you know, necessarily uh, you know, use some of the capital that you have on hand to do that, there is Pace Financing back there at a really cheap interest rate that you pay back through a special assessment on your property tax. People don't know that. People don't know how that works. People don't know what that does for your cash flow. SCORE is another organization that's back there. Here is an organization that has a bunch of retired uh, folks who have run successful small businesses, just sitting there for folks to mentor for free. They answer problems, they have, they have solutions, and we have 40 other organizations like that, okay? Most small businesses, that you know, the, the most common problem that comes to us, financing. Probably the most common issue that we find with small businesses. You know, uh, lenders, you know, they have a difficult time getting risky loans, particularly in low income areas. And we have to be honest, right? A lot of the immigrants in our country start off in low income areas. And so that makes it very, very difficult when you come from an area where a bank is already predetermined going to be a risky loan. And so we have resources in the county to help you connect with programs that specifically target risk loan options with specific banks, specific lenders, micro loans. We have all these kinds of resources at the county and, and, and I think my biggest thing is, I bet you people just don't know about them. They don't know who to call. They don't know where to go. Because the things that we can do is we can help you with import. We can help you with export. We can help you with procurement. We can help you with merchandising, with packaging. We can help you with data and research. We can help you with accounting. You know, a lot of people are just going to their day-to-day -day jobs and their businesses, and they know what they know what's doing well, and they keep doing what's doing well, and they go home and they say, okay, you know what? You know, I'm making a little money today. There are so many accounting practices that can help you sharpen that pencil, that can expand your margins that you just don't know about. And those kinds of lessons, they're free. They're free. You just gotta know where to go to get them, okay? So, you know, you know, at Wayne County, again, you can always visit the website for all these kinds of services. You can always call Kathy or Hassan. You can always call Adam or Ben, and they can get a hold of me or anybody on my team. Uh, we have folks at our team that specialize individually in these areas. Um, we have, you know, I bet you, many of you have come across permitting issues. We have a permitting department at the county. Uh, I think Kathy and Hassan should be relieved to know that we are redoing our permitting ordinance. Here, here. Most people don't know this. In Wayne, in Wayne County, we have a lot of clay, okay? In Macomb and Oakland County, they have a lot of sand. And so when you want to build new, right, when you want a new construction or you want to expand your business and you need permitting, we make you, you know, sometimes Wayne County charges a lot for stormwater ordinance runoff uh, because we have a lot of clay, and we gotta get that water to the ground. We have to comply with the environment. Now, there's things in our ordinance that are redundant, and, and I think things that we can clean up. Point is, we're gonna make this world a little bit easier for you all to develop, to expand, okay? I think that's that's really exciting. We have a Wayne County land bank. Uh, many of you wanna purchase property. We own property in, 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 in Hampshire. Uh, very excited to say that uh, both Hassan, Kathy, and I, uh, we pulled off a great deal um, for, uh, uh, I believe six duplexes in Hamtramck. How many? Three. Three duplexes? Six. Six. Six, six, six homes. Six. Thank you. I didn't do the math. I'm not the accountant. <laughs> but I will tell you that uh, those homes, okay, 
are going to be dedicated uh, to refugees and immigrants. Uh, and we're going to be working with the largest uh, refugee resettlement agency in the state of Michigan, Samaritas, to help locate those folks right here in Hamtramck, because I think that makes the most sense. Okay? Uh, they're going to be vacant parcels. They're going to be homes on them now. They're going to be people in those homes. And I think that does a lot of good for Hamtramck. I also just, I think we'd be crazy to sit here and not talk about the great news that came out yesterday, right, Kathy? That's right. I mean, uh, GM announcing that they're going to continue the Cadillac and the Impala is huge for him. Because what you don't want is you don't want GM to stop paying taxes in Hamtramck. Uh, that's going to be very, very difficult for the city and the county to provide you all services, again, to help make your businesses hum. So I, I think that's that's very exciting. And I'll, I'll leave on one last thing that I think is very, very important uh, for Hamtramck. And, and Kathy and I have been working on this for a long time. Uh, you know, we get about $5.4 million in HUD funds every year. And for about 40 years, uh, we haven't been spending it the best. Let's just say it that way, all right? Now, one thing when Warren Evans came into office, he was very, very dedicated on fixing Wayne County government, and we had a lot of problems. But he's also very dedicated on, whenever he leaves office, he doesn't want anybody coming behind him, behind him and going back to the old days, going back to the things that got us in trouble. And I'll tell you that, when we do get the $5.4 million from HUD, we're supposed to spend it in the areas that need it most. And let me tell you, Hamtramck is one of those areas. <laughs> now, the disappointing news is for the last four years, we haven't been spending that money in Hamtramck for its fair share. And that's the honest to goodness of truth, okay? The good news, we are making a proposal that hopefully will dramatically change. Okay? And that will bring a whole lot more resources in all kinds of different areas that's going to help a whole lot more businesses here in Hamtramck. I think that's, that's very, very exciting. So uh, I hope that was helpful. I, I'm here to answer any questions that you have. I mean, if you need any for me, these, these folks are always going to hold of us. But uh, I got to tell you, this is, a, this is not only just a, a wonderful turnout, but, you know, like I said, uh, the small businesses here in Hamtramck, uh, they're representative of what's happening, not just in the rest of Wayne County, but in a lot of ways, the trends that's happening around the country. And so the way I look at it is, uh, you know, in order to fix the rest of us, uh, we got to start here in a lot of ways. So thank you. Uh, we're going to open it up. If anybody has any questions, we can do a little question and answer session. We'll have about five minutes or so. If anybody has any questions, please raise your hand and feel free to ask at this church home uh, time. Home. Any questions in the crowd? Good. We <laughs> <laughs> let him off easy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to allow our vendors in the back to speak uh, for about a minute each on the services and the resources that they're providing back there. Uh, so that way when you guys are on your way out, or you're grabbing coffee, you're grabbing food, stop back there and see what they have going on. So. First and foremost. Thank you. Uh, SCORE, I've been there for 10 years. SCORE is a national organization, provides free mentoring one-on-one -on -one to people in business or people looking to start a small business. We have 11,000 members nationwide and we have 75 members in the Detroit area. We have about a dozen locations where you can get free mentoring. Just go to our website, uh, www detroit.score.org and you can request mentoring. We'll get a hold of you and send an appointment. We have offices. Uh, well, if you have a business, we'd like to come to your business and mentor as long as that's fine with you. And we have also have workshops. With those workshops uh, have a variety of subjects and they change from month to month, so you have to go to our website to look at them. So, uh, we've been working with the MI American Chamber of Commerce for about two and a half years now, so we really appreciate all they're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Just a little plug for SCORE. As, as a banker, um, these gentlemen do and ladies do a great job. And one of the things we talked about early in this meeting was struggling to find capital, writing a business plan. They do all of that to help you out. And you might be very good at what you do, whether it's a restaurant or provide a service. But oftentimes we're and I work for a bank where we struggle is 
you come in and you want money, you need a financial plan, you need your financial statements, things like that. Seeing these gentlemen can help you out and get you down a path. Because you're very good at what you do, but most times what you do is not put together a financial statement. But that's what we need in the banking industry so that you have access to capital. So I, I appreciate the fact that you came here today. You can be a great catalyst for a lot of these small businesses that certainly need capital to grow and survive. Um, so please don't underplay what SCORE does. They're a great organization. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for doing it. Uh, one good resources in the Detroit area other than banks. So a lot of different programs, probably 30 different programs that can provide funding one way or another. So thank you. Thank you. Sounds good. Uh, next up, Mr. Bali Kumar. He's the Chief Executive Officer with McLean and Green, Michigan. So, uh, so on the topic of financing, if any property owners, especially for commercial businesses, uh, industrial businesses and the like, need financing for energy efficiency, water efficiency, or renewable energy upgrades, that's what the PACE program is designed to do. Uh, you can come talk to me in the back. We have some case studies. I have a case study in my hand of a small apartment building that took out a loan for $124,000, and over the life of the loan, because they did things like installed LED lights, and new furnaces, and better insulation, low flow toilets to conserve on the water, they're gonna save $300,000 in 20 years. So investing a small amount into your property can reap huge rewards over time, and we're here to help you with that. Thank you, Molly. Uh, we're gonna have Councilman Salva Musbury come up and say uh, a, a quick few words. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just arrived from uh, Michigan Municipal League. Uh, event, I was in Franklin Mota, and they were talking about how to bring businesses to the city. Um, when I first ran for election in 2015, one of my three goals is to bring more financial resources to Hamtramck, and that's what we see in Hamtramck. How's Hamtramck in 2013, and how is it now? Um, everybody heard, heard about what, what will happen with GM. Yes, they're going to stay here until January 2020, but at the end of the day, it's a big hit for the city. Financially. So what do we do? How do we solve this issue? I think there's only one easy way to do it. Shop local. If you want food, we have the best restaurants in our channel. If you want groceries, we have the best grocery store, the market. If you want shoes, you want clothes, anything you need, don't just go and spend your money in those billions of dollars uh, stores or market, big market. Spend at Hamtramck. If you want to expect a good services from Hamtramck, do your part, shop only, and then ask the city if they are providing good services or not. This is my advice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, now, continuing on with the program, we're going to bring up uh, State Representative Isaac Robinson uh, to say uh, a few words, talk to you guys, and hopefully uh, enlighten you guys with a few resources and what he's been doing in Lansing on our behalf. Thank you. Give it up for Mr. Sheik, the director. And we want to acknowledge the great team here in Hamtramck, Kathy Anger, Mr. Hassan Sheik. Uh, my mom, of course, worked with Hamtramck for six years. Um, many of those years, uh, Hamtramck was under emergency management. Um, so we want to continue that close relationship, um, making sure we bring as much funds home and um, have that close relationship. Every time I get a bill that relates to municipalities or school boards, I shoot it over to uh, the Hamtramck Public Schools or Kathy and Mr. Sheik. And so we together can um, make sure the voice of Hamtramck and Detroit is heard in Lansing. I've been appointed to three committees in Lansing, uh, taxation, commerce and tourism, and regulatory reform. So um, if any of you want regular updates from me, you know, I'll, I'll give you my cell phone number, you can text me, I'll email you any, as much information as you want. Um, as things come up before my committees. And also, I get to introduce five bills a month. And I've already submitted a lot of bill ideas on many important issues, um, including auto insurance, 
reform and um, environmental justice issues. And, and I want your input um, as we work on these drafts. But taxation, I got appointed to taxation. I didn't know I was going to be appointed to taxation. But obviously, any way we can help small businesses and look at different laws. I'm sure there's a lot of things in the laws that help big oil producers and big corporations. You know, these big mega grants, for example, that GM has, you know, $700 million in tax credits last year to Dan Gilbert. Uh, it's time that we kind of make sure that we have a tax uh, process, tax laws that treat small businesses more fairly. And I'll need your help um, to come up with those ideas. I don't know everything. Sada Mosmery knows everything. I don't know a little bit. <laughs> but together we know everything. Um, um, but um, I'm happy to be here. I'm not gonna, they told me I could talk 10 minutes, but that would be horrible. Um, so, <laughs> not they really did. I said, well, how about four and a half minutes? So I'll stop at four and a half minutes. Um, honored to be partnering with Senator Adam Ollier. Um, he's your state senator. Um, he represents a number of municipalities, and he'll, he'll share with you those, but he includes hand traffic, out of bar, we share head traffic. And I'm, he's a, I'm actually your state rep right now. You are? Yeah, so I gotta be nice to Adam. <laughs> Any questions for them? We have Ara Puskik here. We have all our, our brothers here, Mr. Abu and Mo, all these business leaders. Former Councilman Wallach is here. You have a question right here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Please stand, uh, uh, state your name. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Fouad al uh, You mentioned something about the insurance I was going to ask you, but you, you mentioned that you, uh, you already, uh, uh, you mentioned that you're already working on the insurance reform. I know it's uh, uh, one of the things that, especially like Wayne County is one of the, most expensive when it comes to auto insurance. Uh, I don't know if it's in the state or in the, in the nation. So uh, just uh, the steps and what should we expect and, and how to? Well, in Cleveland, Ohio, which is also an urban area, they pay $1,200 a year in car insurance. If you have two DUIs, bad driving record, $1,200 a year. In Detroit, the average is $5,400 um, a year. So we have a lot of other states that we can look at, and a lot of the conversation kind of in Detroit historically talks about redlining. So some of the reasons that our rates locally are higher is because of zip codes, non-driving factors. Um, that's a big part of this, and I think any deal that we, we come up with should at least address that, either cap credit scores, cap zip codes. But we also have to have an informal elected. There's a 10 or more big areas of discussion here. There's a catastrophic fund, $20 billion in it. Every car you have, you get charged $192 for this catastrophic fund. And it's not subject to FOIA. You know, so that's a lot of money coming, that's being mandated from the government, where we don't even know how that money is being used or spent. Uh, there's an important need for a fee schedule. H hospitals can charge five, 10, 15 times more for a procedure or an x-ray than they would charge Medicare and Medicaid. Um, so you have the trial lawyers, very interested in this. They give out a lot of money to politicians. You have the hospitals. You also have the car insurance companies. So um, all three of those groups need to be held accountable. Um, in California, they have 11 actuaries that work in their government oversight office that before the car insurance companies can raise your rates, they got to get approval from the government agency. In Michigan, I think we have one part-time actuary. In the last 1,300 times car insurance rates have been raised, not one time has it been disapproved. Big issue in Michigan, we have unlimited medical. So um, people are mandated to have a Cadillac health insurance policy. Hospitals, I met with the DMC, and they told me we have the best car insurance in America because of the unlimited medical. But we've been the 50th most expensive five years in a row. So, what I want to do in partner with Senator um, Adam Bollier is making sure as this debate goes through, we're not tricked by sound bites. Each of these components where injustice is built into the system should address. Because if we address the red line, it's not going to knock it down 5,400 down to 1,200. We have many, 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 many components where our government, our system has been corrupted, complete because they listen to the car insurance company, the trial lawyers, and the hospitals. And it's time the people kind of drive this process. And I, I have a good feeling about it. 
that the conversations we're having, the more we are informed as a public, when they come up with these polls, we're going to say, well, why don't we have more actuaries working? Why aren't we a file news state? Why are we letting hospitals charge 10 times more when you're in a car accident? So it's not just redlining. And another thing that bothers me, every time there's a proposal, people call it racist. You'll see this. And a lot of the people who are from my caucus will say, that's racist. If anything is racist, it's the current system where we pay $5,400. And in fact, it hates everybody, no matter your ethnicity. Ohio pays half of what Michigan pays overall. And then in Cleveland, they pay about 20% of what we pay in Detroit. Um, so there's a lot of bills. Um, there's, there's some bills that have already been introduced that I've co-sponsored. One is to require an audit of this catastrophic fund. So there's about 10. Every time I, the nothing is very simple. Um, but there's a lot of options. In New Jersey, they have what's called a dollar a day insurance. So people who are low income on Medicaid, they only pay $365 a year. Some of the costs are shifted to people's health insurance, their Medicaid and Medicare. So um, I'm um, working for a real deal. There's going to be a lot of conversation. But really, changes are going to happen unless we in the community get a majority of votes together in the Senate and the House. And I know Senator Ollier, he was on every billboard in Detroit, <laughs> and, he, and he wasn't afraid to stand up to the corporate special interest, even if it's unpopular sometimes. And, and, and so, are you guys ready for a real deal? Yes. 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 All right. Everybody say 1,200. 1,200. Way better than 5,400. Say 1,200. 1,200. Way better. Way better. 5,400. 5,400. Now, when I was at my swearing and I had everybody say repeal. Repeal. No fault. No fault. Say repeal. Repeal. No fault. No fault. Now, if you got the 50th most expensive. <laughs> insurance in the country, that's a good thing to get rid of that. You got a car that don't work, you get a new car. But the people who are spreading the money around say, hey, we just need to tweak it. Say, we need more to tweak. We need to dismantle this failed car insurance company. So what I present to you is just a loud voice because I got grandmamas from Hamtramck blowing up my messenger. It's a serious issue. And, um, my, my, uh, one of my opponents, Saad, he, he makes sure that issue is raised all the time. Um, we got to be unified and, and fight for lower rates. Amen. Thank you. My 10 minutes is up. Do we have any more questions for the state representative? All right, the political power program. I'm here now. Magic Hawaii. Damn, Lazarus. Watch that. All right. Okay. Uh, first, I would like to thank you for um, all your hard work and offer for the. We stand up uh, against the uh, Mr. Kaladi. I need no um, reschedule on the uh, uh, public hearing on uh, March the 28th. Can you please tell us about a little bit about the U.S. Ecology? Yeah, so uh, everybody put that on your calendar, March 28th. There's going to be a public hearing on the proposed expansion of U.S. Ecology's hazardous waste and storage facility. And this is another issue that we need to raise, raise to the top. Um, there are 12 hazardous waste storage facilities in Michigan. Ten of them are in Wayne County. So there's a problem with an over-concentration of the worst chemicals known to mankind being dumped in our community. So I want to partner with the senator, examining how to do all types of things to approach this. Um, right now, U.S. Ecology doesn't have to do soil testing, but yet they're processing the worst chemicals known to mankind. So. Um, previously, they had processed tin ore, which is fracking waste, radioactive waste. Currently, they say they don't do it anymore. They said they won't do it anymore. But under the law, there's nothing in the law to prevent them from doing it. Um, so we really got to raise, raise our discussions and be informed about the impact of fracking waste. It's not just fracking occurring where they're not drilling down the street, but places where they drill across the country. Wayne County is now becoming America's capital for dumping fracking waste. A lot of it is going into Van Buren Township and in the, in the um, landfills out there. But a few blocks away on Georgia Street, U.S. Ecology wants to go from processing about 60,000 gallons of this waste to having the capacity to 660,000 gallons. 
and through my mother's efforts and Sam's and the community and, and Saad and everybody coming together, we've been able to delay the expansion. And I gotta give credit to Governor Rick Snyder on his watch, it wasn't expanded. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Um, but he had to give him credit because it didn't happen on his watch. So we need to be on the phone and on Twitter and email making sure Governor Whitmer knows that Hamtramck and Detroit's east side is not the place for America's radioactive waste to be dumped. Everybody agree with me on that? Yes. Everybody say no to radioactive waste. I'm going to get a poem. Say super college graduates, we actually all negotiate. Anyway, we're going to fight. Do we have any more questions for the state rep? No, with that, uh, let's give them up. We have one question right here. Just keep on working with the insurance issue on we are 100% behind you. All right. 100% behind me. I love it. Thank you, Give brother. Stand up for a round of applause. All right. Thank you, brother. Director. Isn't that blue tie? So I, I, I coordinated. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, with that, let's give another round of applause to the state representative. Thank you so much for your support. Now, um, before we go into our, our, our final speaker for the night, uh, I want to give this opportunity to give a round of applause to our host tonight, the People's Community Service Center here in Hampton. The work they do here is phenomenal. Um, I would like for the newly appointed director, Dr. Montgomery, to come up and for a minute or so, just tell us what you're doing here, what initiatives you're doing, um, and also uh, mark your calendar or save the date for April 4th. We're going to be doing a, hopefully a job fair here with SEMCA, um, and you'll be seeing that getting circulated to you as well with the City of Hamtramck and SEMCA. So with no further ado, Dr. Montgomery, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to welcome you to our center here in Hamtramck. I uh, was a letter carrier in 48212. I actually lived in 48212. So if you live in Hamtramck, I drop mail. It's been a while, maybe you weren't a resident then, but I've been to every mailbox in Hamtramck. <laughs> but uh, my, I retired from the police department as a fingerprint expert. And I came to People's Community Services in 2011 as a youth program director. So recently, about six weeks ago, I became the executive director. And I hear what uh, the representative was talking about. And so there's similar issues that are occurring in Southwest Detroit. That's where our administrative offices are. And I just want to say I would love to be a part of um, a, a committee that, that organized in Southwest Detroit. It took 10 years for big industry. You know, that's located where the building, where the building the bridge to Canada. 10 years for them to realize there's actual people living here. And, uh, and there's still issues. I think Marathon had some big <laughs> emissions uh, just a little over a week ago. And so some of the same and similar issues, I'm surprised that there's 12 uh, landfills in Wayne, uh, well, 10 of them are in Wayne County. That's amazing. And, and, and it's just unfair. But we have three facilities. We have a senior center on Kniff. Of course, we have the Joseph Campo Center. And uh, what I, one of the things I'm trying to do is research the um, youth program. So I welcome suggestions from the community, what they'd like to see here. I think that's very important to hear from you all and what you'd like to see for your youth. And uh, I guess I should have mentioned that uh, my background is in medical anthropology. That's what got me as a prevention specialist. So culture and how we experience illness is very important to me. And um, I just want you to know that you're welcome. And um, didn't mention, but Brenda Lawrence will be here on a similar issue on immigration on June 17th. Maybe they mentioned it, but I thought I put it out there because we made that arrangement. But thank you and welcome. Okay. Another round of applause for you. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to, to your service. We look forward to working with you. And anybody that's in the room, if you have an event, if you've got something going on, please think of this venue. Um, as they do a lot of great work here. And keep a lookout on our Facebook page, the city's website, as we post future events that uh, potentially may be here or throughout the city. But again, make sure you're looking at our social media. Um, now we have our final speaker for the night, um, or for the afternoon, as we, haven't had, we have no windows in here, so it feels a lot later than it is, doesn't it? Um, but uh, Senator Adam Hollier, um, he's working hard on our behalf. He's working hard to 
to listen to our, uh, our the residents of Hamtramck. So we're looking forward to seeing what he has to say. But while he's talking, um, let certain thoughts marinate in your in your heads because we want to have a robust question and answer session after this. Um, you guys have you guys left the wheel off pretty easy. Um, I know you guys grilled the uh, state representative Isaac Robinson in a little bit, um, but let's make sure we get some good uh, viable questions here for the question and answer session. Um, so with no further ado, uh, Senator Holier, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Great. Great. Well, first, let me say thank you for letting me come over and visit. Uh, Hamtramck is, is probably the, one of the closest places to me, so I live about a mile from here. So when we talk about Hamtramck, it's always been uh, a place that it is home for me, you know. And as your councilman was talking about buying local, I think it's critically important. And the reason I say that is because for the past uh, four or five months, Kathy and I have been talking every day just about, about how we're going to keep the GM plant here, but most importantly, how we maintain the city of Hamtramck. Right, because whether there's a plant there today, tomorrow, or next week, you got to think of tax base, right? Does everybody remember that? Yes, sir. And the people who are going to make that tax base are the people in this room. It's not General Motors. It's not American Axle. It's not Tesla. It's not some big corporation that we're going to expect the change from, right? And as my colleague, uh, Representative Robinson, would say, it's critically important that we're engaged from start to finish on all these issues whether it be U.S. Ecology and T-Norm, whether it be any one of these issues, they're going to be led by you. And that's why Monday I'm having a, what we're calling our, our caucuses, where we're going to start to talk about what you want to see as a community. Because as your elected representative, it's my job to get it done. Right? It's not my job to tell you what you need or what you want. It is my job to make sure that when you say, hey, I need these five things, that we help you get them done. And that's what I'm committed to doing. So Monday, uh, at 6.30, we'll be at Harper Woods High School, uh, and we'll be starting that visioning process. And we will be in Harper Woods, we'll be in Gross Point, we'll be in Detroit, we'll be in Hamtramck, we'll be in Highland Park, because I have a uniquely large district in that I have eight municipalities. I cover a quarter of the city of Detroit, but seven of the 10 Detroit House representatives, and I share a community. So when we talk about how diverse this district is, it is the most diverse in the state. But that's, a, that's really a benefit for us. It's a huge benefit because we are representative of this state. And if no one has told you, Michigan is ground zero for the presidential election in two years, right? And so when people are talking about every, every national candidate is gonna be in town, every single one of them are gonna be here and are gonna be trying to get your vote. And what we wanna do is we wanna provide them with, this is what it's gonna take, right? And so as you think about this next year over the next two years, you need to be saying, what does my community need? Where does my community want to be? Ken, how many times has, has Hamtramck been in emergency management in the last 20 years? Uh, twice. Twice. And so when I met with the governor a couple of weeks ago, I said, Governor, you don't want Hamtramck to be the first emergency manager you, you appoint. She said, no, no, absolutely I don't. I said, well, they need a million dollars, right? <laughs> they need a million dollars and they need it quick because they can't afford to lose public safety. You know, and when I met with the uh, director of TED, which is the Talent and Economic Development, they lead MEDC, they do unemployment and all those things. I said, well, how are we gonna get money in the Hamtramck? And they're like, well, why do we need to do that? I was like, because they need it. They need it real bad. They need it right now, they need it yesterday, they need it a week ago. And so when I work with the county, it's the same discussion. And we have a county and a county exec that is critically important, that care greatly about Hamtramck. And he asked me to mention that they're also opposing the expansion of US ecology. So, but what you need from us is you need us to be able to get everybody in the room and be on both sides, right? And so when you're saying, hey, I have a problem with so-and-so, what you are not asking me to do is to go say, I have a problem with so-and-so. You are asking me to get that person in the room and get that problem fixed, right? And that's what we've got to do. That's what you've got to start to expect from your elected officials. If you say, hey, I got a problem, then I come back with solutions. And that's what I'm committed to doing. So like I said, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Would love to talk about some of those things, but, um, I'm sitting on the Appropriations Committee. I'm one of uh, two Detroiters in the Senate that do that. I have the TED budget, which is includes MEDC, unemployment, and all those things. I've also got the Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee and uh, Justice and Public Safety, which is Michigan State Police, Veterans Affairs, and Correction. And I'm on the Transportation Committee, and then JCAR, which is uh, the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules. So 
We've got a lot going on, and we're going to have a lot going on, and this state is going to change fundamentally. Because for the past almost eight years, uh, Republicans in the state Senate have had a monopoly. They've been able to do whatever they want. And that's not the case anymore. With the lieutenant governor calling the shots and them only having a three-seat majority, there are going to be a lot of close votes. And so our ability to leverage industry and folks and say, we are united on these issues across the districts is going to be critical. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, now, like I said, we can't let Senator Holy off easy. So I, uh, let's, let's get some questions from the crowd, please. No questions at all. This is the opportunity. I know I hear uh, a lot of people always come to the office. They have a lot of questions. Um, somebody's got to have something. Just ask Governor for another video question. Yeah, I will do that. <laughs> and Kathy, wonderful. It's not a question, but I just want to thank I just want to thank our elected officials. Um, I will tell you that uh, Hamtramck does have a great team. Uh, Councilman Almasmari, Councilman Parada are grappling with a very difficult budget this year. Senator Hollier, Representative Robinson. Um, our congresswoman have all been attentive. Warren Evans and his staff have been attentive. I don't know a time in the history of my career that I've had the attention of the people that we need in, in a situation like this. And I want to thank you publicly because the work you do, when you say we talk all the time, it is true. It is a continual conversation with Wayne County, with uh, the senator, with the representative, and we are going to continue to work hard on behalf of Hamtramck. And your ability to build a business, to sustain a business, and that's something that Khalil mentioned when he was, was at the podium, it's the sustainability. We may not attract every new business, but it's our job to keep the ones that are here and make sure that you're able to thrive in our community. So I just wanted to give a shout out and thank all of you who make that a reality. Thanks so much, Kathy. Uh, do we have any other any other comments? Any other statements? Any other questions? Are you going to lower the insurance rates on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do everything I can to do that. I, I think that there's no question that that is the number one issue. So, and the reason I talk about that uh, is because one of my best friends and his wife are starting a business, and they have three kids, and we don't have one. Man, where did they save all this money? They live in Redford, and we were like talking about our bills and how all kinds of stuff. They pay $6,000 a year less than auto rent. And so over the last 10 years that they've lived there and I've lived here, they might, anybody do the math? That's what you got. So they, 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 10 years, 10 years, 10 years, they pay $6,000 less. 10 times, 10 times, Okay, so. Raise your hand if you would not be starting a business if you had $60,000 sitting around in the pocket. Right. I mean, that your business wouldn't be open, that you wouldn't be thriving, that you wouldn't have a new roof. So all the things that we talk about are so critically related to the fact that our auto insurance is ridiculously high, right? And people want to say that there are all these other factors and all these other issues, and that's great. But is anybody here driving a Ferrari? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I wish. <laughs> but if you, could, if you could afford to drive a Ferrari, you would drive a Ferrari, right? But if somebody said, hey guys, you can only drive a Ferrari, you drive a Ferrari or you walk, how many people would be walking? I would walk. Right? I mean, so that, that's what we're doing when we're talking about auto insurance. We're criminalizing something that is unreasonable. We are asking people to pay an unreasonable burden for something that doesn't make sense. And so as we look at that, there are a hundred other issues that we should be talking about, that we should be thinking about that we're gonna get fixed along with auto insurance, along, along with some of the environmental justice issues, along with how we invest in small businesses. Because as a state, as a country, we have disproportionately valued the growth and expansion of huge companies when what we know is small businesses employ more people, they are the ones that develop, right? So if you have Amazon 20 years ago, when they first started and all they did was sell books, you're like, eh, you know, whatever. But that is why Seattle is what it is. That's why Washington and some of the state have grown, because they invested in, in a business and it grew. Same thing with General Motors or Henry Ford or Chrysler. What we need to be looking at in this room and saying is, who's going to be the next one? Right? Who's going to be the next company that goes from a small business to 
to a large business to a huge business. And that's what everybody wants to talk about. The reality is we just need you to be successful at whatever size you want to be and to stay here. And Representative Robinson and I are committed to doing whatever we can at the state level to make that happen. And I know Khalil will do whatever he can at the county. And you should really lean into him at the county. They've got all kinds of resources and money. They've got everything. They just got blank checks just sitting around. Let's go get them. And so again, uh, Monday, 6.30 at uh, Harper Woods High School. I'd really appreciate it if you're there. It's going to be critically important. That's what we're going to set our agenda. So if you have an issue, if you have a complaint, if you're like, this is what I want to see done, I need you to be in the room. Because whatever comes out of that process is what we're going to work through. Thank you so much, um, and uh, you know I'll also be there, uh, you know, on behalf of City of Hamtramck. So we'll work together and make sure that we're doing the best that we can uh, to build our city up for the future. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. He was saying we're here driving Ferrari. Uh, I, I I I went the, the the fun the easy route to do that. I I I nicknamed my Chevy Ferrari. So every time I'm like, Lance, give me my keys to my Ferrari. <laughs> you know, pull up the Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> Um, I know uh, a sister of Al Hamoud, uh, if you want to stand up real quick, she, wa um, she stepped in, but she wasn't here when I was doing introductions. She's with, with Wayne County Healthy Communities, if uh, everybody can look at her. She has a lot of resources back there, along with uh, Sister Virginia back there. They work together. Uh, make sure you guys check them out. Um, as we you know, progress with our, our program right now, which is coming to a conclusion, uh, on the agenda you see that the conclusion is at 455. That has been done on purpose. After we're done with the speaking, the most important part of this meeting here is the networking, the relationship building. We want to create a culture of genuine relationships here within the city. So after we're done speaking, until around 4.55, 5 o'clock, please feel free to circulate around the room, grab more food, exchange business cards, create the network that we need to build a stronger community because that's how we're going to do it. It's having conversations. Um, and hopefully as we exit this room, we'll have made three to five new friends. Hey, we can help each other do A, B, and C. We can collaborate on D, E, and F. A, B, C, D, E, F, yep, there we go. <laughs> no, but that's, that's what we're trying to do here. And we're trying to do this, as we move forward, we're gonna have a series of these. This is the second that we did one a couple months back, the second, and we're gonna continue to do these. Over and over and over again, reaching into the, uh, parts of the community that may not have been reached, that may not have been touched, and you know what, next time, we'll be, we'll be bringing in more organizations, more uh, community groups, but everybody that's in this room, hopefully you'll be at that meeting as well. And each meeting will continuously grow, because that's how we're gonna build the power and the culture and the community here in Hamtramck. Um, so with that being said, I'd like to bring Brother uh, Butler Bowes here up here uh, from the Yemeni Chamber to say uh, a few words. Thank you, Brother Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Yemeni American Chamber of Commerce, I want to thank uh, all of you for coming here tonight for this great uh, event. Uh, the major of uh, oh, the the major and aim of this event is uh, to provide business education uh, and to have the opportunity to get your uh, answer uh, to your questions uh, that related to the business issues. Uh, that affected all over the business in the city of Hamtramck. I hope everyone enjoyed the meeting um, and found the great value on business education at this venue, as well get uh, their question answered. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in our next business event. It's the March 23rd. This event will focus on helping the business owners uh, and investors understand uh, the proper way to buy and sell a sustainable business and uh, help, uh, help you uh, uh, to get more resource at this event. The Chamber of Commerce uh, mission to support and promote uh, local businesses. We are uh, consistently striving to develop a strong and effective partnership with uh, corporate and business owners uh, institution and organizations. The YACC uh, also would like uh, to explore possible feature project and event together with institution organization that uh, reflect the buzz of the change in, the, in our local community. 
And uh, also, um, I'm pleased to inform you that November 1st will be the YCC annual uh, event at Biblos in Durban. So please save this uh, date in your calendar. Um, also, at the end, I want a special thank you to the uh, organizer. I want to thank the Amtronic City Manager, Kathy Anger. Uh, Amtronic Economic uh, Development Director, Hassan Sheikh. Uh, the Wayne County Director, uh, Khalil Rahat. The DDA of Amtronic. And all the government officials who is here with us tonight. And I want to thank uh, the media for uh, tonight. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Stuart, from in the Wayne County in the back. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mother. Um, now, as we come to a conclusion for, the, for our afternoon, um, I want to bring to everybody's attention next weekend here in the city, we're going to have something called Eight Days, Eight Great Days in Amtrak, uh, where we're going to have the Kluchki Run, we're going to have a music festival, there's going to be a lot of great stuff going on in the city, so check out our Facebook, check out our website, um, check out the DDA's Facebook, uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on, tell your friends, tell your family, bring them down, um, and this is going to be something that's going to be great for the family and great for your friends to have a good time at. So make sure you keep an eye open for that. With that being said, I want to thank everybody in the room. Uh, for taking the time out of your afternoon to be here. This is the, the steps that we need and this is what we're going to be doing to move forward. Um, I want to make sure that we're continuously having these conversations to grow our business community here. Uh, and with that being said, I want to conclude the night by saying thank you. Um, Council? Can we do like a question and answer, like a general like, session? Or, I, I, I have questions that I was hoping that we could answer like, while we're here today. I, like, I was hoping that we could just talk more about like the plans for like a citywide merchant group uh, and how we can get that off the ground. Because like, my business is on Carpenter, so I'm not in the DDA, and I, we don't really have like anything that's just, that we can like work with, an entity that we can work with. And I really like, yeah. I was hoping that today we could really start discussing like how that's so, going to get off the ground. Definitely, thanks so much, Councilman. That's definitely a great thought. So from the city side, we're actually working on something like that, and I think offline we'll have a conversation to see how we can, how we can work on that. Uh, for the, the the way that we kind of program today, it was more set for the elected officials. Um, and hopefully, we're, like I said, this is going to be a series of many meetings. Um, and maybe the next one, let's talk and let's see how we can make that uh, part of the activities for the, the future meetings. Um, I appreciate that thought. Let's, let's, go, let's go, jump on into a meeting on Monday and let's talk about that. Thank you. Um, now, again, take this time, eat some food, get to know your neighbors, get to know your business partners, and see how we can work together and make this community stronger from the business side. Uh, again, thank you for coming. Uh, let's give a round of applause to the DBA, the Emily Chamber, uh, the City of um, all the visitors that came out, our speaker, Khalil, uh, State Representative Isaac Robinson, uh, Senator Bollier, uh, and with that, thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Have a great day.